Hey guys, Tewas here, back with some more Battlefield 5. The game just launched pretty recently, but is it worth the hefty price tag? Let's jump right into this review and find out. We're gonna go through our five categories here. Story, visual, sound, gameplay, and replay value. Each category has a possible 10 points, and we'll average out our score at the end to see what kind of a total score we can get. Let's dive into this. For the story, there are three individual stories, which are pretty good, though they're also pretty short. The first story takes place in Africa, where you have the basic sandbox design for gameplay. Go here, blow up this, kill this, go there, blow up this, etc, etc, etc. You can use cars, planes, or your feet to take you around from place to place, and after you, you've done what you're supposed to do, you have to hold out for a few minutes while fighting off the German army. It's pretty basic. The second story takes place in some mountains in what I assume is Norway. You play a young woman trying to rescue her mom from the Germans who have captured her. Once you rescue your mom and all hell breaks loose, you, she tells you that they're manufacturing heavy water for the nuclear program and that we have to stop them. Of course, I mean, it's just, it's just logical, right? Once you destroy the objectives and try to escape, the plan fails and you're recaptured. Mom throws you off a bridge so that you can escape and then the game returns into a uh, sandbox. Go here, blow up this, etc, etc. Now for the third story, you play a young African man that's just arrived in France ready to fight. Him and his brother lead a battalion of soldiers through German-held territory in order to destroy cannons, AA, and even recapture a French fort. The third story is really linear, where you follow a predetermined path and do whatever objectives appear. For the story as a whole, I give Battlefield 5 a 7 out of 10 points. The stories, though each were individually fun, didn't really tie into one another. Three different stories in three different parts of the world without any kind of link other than they were all allies. That's it. So far, none of the stories are from the Axis's point of view. There's at least one more story coming out in December that I know of, which is geared towards tanks. Maybe that story will be from the Axis tank's point of view. Moving along, our next category is visuals. Battlefield 5 offers up some of the most stunningly pleasing visuals of any game this year. The weapons look amazing, animations are on point, and explosions are ridiculous. So far, the environments you can play on are limited, but in the coming months, all that will grow and evolve as more maps come out. Right now, there are a few urban type settings, a snowy mountaintop map, a marshy swampland in France, and even an air hangar in the desert. Smoke, fog of war, even blizzards and sandstorms all add to the ambiance of these maps and definitely help to set the mood of war. Sometimes, when looking through scopes, I've noticed that the fog of war can be too much hindering gameplay. Your scope basically whites out in Rotterdam and makes for a really hard time using scopes on any weapon, including the assault rifles or semi-auto rifles. The maps themselves are beautiful, each having a different feel while being completely destructible. A lot of little details make the game, from shoe prints in the snow, to track marks through the sand, to smoke trails behind airplanes, and everything in between. Some aspects of cosmetics have been added to this version of Battlefield, which now lets you have a little more freedom with what you look like. Along with cosmetics, you can choose the sex of your character, meaning that all the girl gamers out there can be properly represented, or that random dude that wants to run a girl class. For visuals, I give Battlefield 5 a 9 out of 10. If they could improve upon the Fog of War issue and fix a few bugs and random glitches that happen, it would most likely receive a perfect score. Our next category is Sound. Battlefield comes through once again on an epic soundtrack. The music in-game really brings it to life along with the many many shouts, shots, explosions, and vehicles you hear. There is a constant barrage of information to your ears, which is the crazy symphony of war. The tracks of tanks, propeller on planes, and even the hum of the view on rockets are all incredibly realistic. Little things like the crackling of a fire, the crumbling of a building, or the sounds of your footsteps crunching through the snow. They all work perfectly together. For the sound, I give Battlefield 5 a perfect 10 out of 10. I think they did a great job making all the madness sound really cohesive and not at all overwhelming. Though explosions and gunfires are ringing around all the time, a player can still make out the footsteps of enemies approaching and hear tanks and planes coming in. All the sounds are realistic and not at all cartoony sounding. Voice acting, in my opinion, is awesome. The only problem I have with it is I wish it would be toned down a little bit. By that I mean less screaming, formatics when downed. Other than that, I really like the way Battlefield 5 sounds. Gameplay is our next category, and by no surprise, it's hella fun. Battlefield, for the most part, manages to churn out fun games whenever they release something. This rendition is no different. In addition to all the things you know and like about Battlefield, they've added a few comforts that a lot of players could appreciate. 
Each player can now heal themselves with one stored med pack. Yes, no longer needing to sit around waiting on time to heal or meds. You can just press the heal button and move on. Another interesting addition to the game is the ability to revive squad mates. No longer needing to wait on a medic, anyone in green can revive each other. The old principles apply to teammates, meaning that only medics can revive them, but this addition really drives squad play. If you stick together as a squad, you're more likely to survive. Another addition is the fortification system. You build fortification around flags and other objectives you're defending in order to help you so that you can defend your position better. Sometimes this helps you, other times it does the opposite of what you want and the enemy uses your fortifications against you. Not everything can be built needs to be built, so plan your strategy before wildly building. I give gameplay an 8 out of 10. The current build of the game is lacking an impressive arsenal and the map selection is pretty small. Within a few months of release, the game will be posting updates with new weapons, maps, and stories, but until there's a little more diversity in gameplay, it'll have to wait on a perfect score. The next category in this review is replay value. This story does have a little bit of replay value because if you find all the hidden letters in each story, you can unlock usable melee weapons in multiplayer. Along with that, completing the story on hardcore mode also unlocks achievements for doing so. However, once you've gotten all the unlocks, there really isn't any other draw to the story mode except maybe your own urge to play it. As for the multiplayer aspect of Battlefield 5, the replay value is pretty limited at the moment. There are only a few maps with a limited amount of game modes. Right now, Grand Operations is the one I'm drawn to the most, because it throws all the game modes into one over a period of three days in-game. However, once you've played for a week or two, you've been on both sides of each map, in each game mode multiple times, it starts to feel repetitive. They do throw assignments into the mix to try to keep things interesting and give you some sort of goal to work towards, but for the most part it feels like it's lacking at the moment. For replay value, I give Battlefield 5 a 7 out of 10 points. If we tally our points up here, we end up with 41 out of 50 points, which gives us a score of 8.2 out of 10. After a few of these patches start rolling out, I feel that this score will increase dramatically. More maps, weapons, vehicles, and customization options will all improve the replay value score, and once that final story gets added into the game, it will hopefully give us a bit of an insight into the access side of things. So in the beginning I asked, is the game worth the hefty price tag? Well, right now, honestly, I don't think so. Unless you're an absolute die-hard Battlefield fan, then I just think the game is lacking in content to warrant that expensive of a price tag. If you're a die-hard fan, chances are you've already picked up a copy of the game, like myself. If you haven't gotten the game already, I would suggest holding off on the purchase till more around Christmas time. In that amount of time, a few patches would have already rolled out and more content added. So what do you guys think? Have you picked up your copy of the game yet or are you waiting until there's more stuff to do? Let me know down below. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please click that thumbs up button. It really helps me out a ton. And if you're not already subscribed, please do so for more history lessons, random gameplay videos, and reviews just like this one. Have a great rest of your day. I'm going to get back to work here, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later!